Hey, this is Horner. We're going to look at images that are formed by refraction or how refraction actually works. Uh, the part of the ruler that's submerged in the water in the photograph appears to be closer than the part above the water, and that's because the light is refracted uh, at that air water boundary, and so it actually magnifies uh, the ruler itself. And so that would be, you can try this uh, in about anything that you want to in a cup of water, and you would see the same thing. So to your eye, the, uh, the rays appear to diverge not from the object, uh, but instead from this point P here. So the ruler appears closer than it really is because there's a refraction at the boundary here. And so instead of seeing the object here, we think that it's a little bit closer to us. And it's just the way that light behaves as it goes from one medium to the other. Uh, the optical axis is the line that you could draw through those two points and then through the glass right straight to whatever is picking it up. Uh, Snell's law then just, regu uh, just relates the angles to each other, and so we've kind of seen that before. This time it's written in a divisible form instead of a multiplication form. Um, the small angle approximation here just says uh, that uh, the sine of the angle is approximately equal to the tangent of the angle. So the image distance here can simply be uh, used, uh, be found just finding this, uh, this nice little equation here that we've got. Uh, so if I have an air bubble window, a fish and a sailor look at each other from a 5 centimeter thick glass portal in a submarine, uh, there happens to be a small air bubble in the right right in the center of the glass. They want to know how far behind the surface of the glass does the air bubble appear to the fish and to the sailor. And so to do that, we're going to take a look at our, our picture here. Uh, we're going to represent the air bubble as a point source uh, and use the ray model of light. Uh, light from the bubble will refract into the air at one side and into the water on the other side. So the ray diagram uh, looks like figure 18.25. So to solve this, what we'll do is we're just going to plug in the uh, observer is the fish and it's in the water. So this is the index of refraction for the water. The bubble, the object, is in the glass and that's 1.5. And we know that uh, the object distance is about 2.5 centimeters. So then we're able to solve and we see that the image distance is at about 2.2 centimeters. And that's the difference between the two. Uh, this is the apparent depth of the bubble. The sailor in the air sees the bubble at an image distance that's a little bit different. So here we're going to use the index refraction of air, so that's where the sailor is, versus where the bubble is, which is N1. Uh, and that's 1.5 because it's in the glass. If we divide the two and then uh, multiply times that uh, object distance, we end up with an image distance of 1.7 centimeters. So the image distance is shorter for the sailor because of the larger difference between the two indices of refraction. So the bigger the difference between the two, the more magnification that you'll get. Uh, this section is about lens, uh, lenses and ray tracing, so we're going to do a lot of this in class. Um, but a lens is basically just a transparent material that uses refraction uh, at curved surfaces in order to form an image. So this is why uh, if you don't see really well, you can use eyeglasses or you can use contact lenses in order to see better. So ray tracing is really important whenever we do this, and it helps us kind of see where all those lines are going. A converging lens, which is con, uh, uh, is basically used in order to uh, bend light so it comes to a nice focus or a nice point over on this side. Uh, they are thicker on the center than they are on the edges, and so we're going to call this one a double convex lens, and it's because it's got an outward bow on each side. Diverging lenses are different. They bend light away from the source, and uh, we call these double concave. So you'll notice that they are concave on each side. Uh, in converging lenses, the incoming ray does refract towards the optical axis uh, at both the first air-to-glass boundary and at the second glass-to-air boundary. And because it does that, it then continues to point towards the axis, and that's why we have a focal point. Uh, and this just shows you a little bit better how that bends towards the normal and then away from the normal, but when it does that, it continues to bend in the same direction. Uh, the incoming rays initially parallel to the axis converge at the same point, so we see here is where they've converged. We call that the focal length. 
so it's a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, there's focal points actually on both sides of the lens because if I had light emanating on this side coming to this coming through the lens then they would all point back to here. Uh, notice that we are using parallel rays of light and that helps us know where that focal point is. Uh, for a diverging lens the focal length is the distance from the lens to the point at which the Para, the rays parallel to the optical axis converge or from which they appear to diverge. So either way you think about it is absolutely fine. When we do the ray diagram tracing in class, you'll kind of see how that works. Uh, a thin lens is an ideal lens, okay, and the thickness here is zero and it lies entirely in the plane of the lens plane. Uh, is what we say. So we can use this thin lens approximation to look at all any type of lens, okay? Uh, and uh, we can do that as rays cross the lens plane and all the distances are measured from that lens plane itself. So here we've got the lens plane, that's just the axis of the lens, so right in between a bisector just divides it by two. Uh, and we can do that for both the um, converging and the diverging lenses. So here we've got the converging. Uh, you'll notice that we have a focal point on each side. We call this one the far focal point. So it's on the opposite side of where the light is coming from. And then the near focal point where the light would be going into the lens itself. So any ray passing through the near focal point emerges from the lens parallel to the axis. So this is why we do uh, parallel focal point, focal point parallel for a lot of our diagrams that we'll do. Uh, if you have any light that goes through the center of the lens, it is not bent. Instead, it just travels right through at the same angle that it went in. So this would be a lot like that mirror that we were working on. Uh, if rays do diverge from an object at point P and intersect where they converge at point P prime, we call that a real image. And so really the other way to think about real images is the image is where it should be. So when the light comes through, uh, and gets bent through from that ends, the image appears on the opposite side of the lens. A virtual image would then make that lens, uh, so let's use a diverging lens here, where all the light uh, comes back through the lens. So the light's going this way, and your object is on this side, and then you get, a, uh, you get an image on the same side here. So we call that a virtual image. So we've done that a little bit with mirrors. Um, real images, here's a good picture of a real image. You'll notice that real images uh, are, are upside down uh, and they can either be magnified or reduced, but this just shows you all the different lines that go into making up that image for the very top of the image. Um, we're going to use, uh, uh, when we go through and do our diagrams, we're also going to use these special rays. Notice that there's one that goes through uh, parallel, one that goes through the focal point, and then one that comes through the focal point on this side. So we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about how those go through. So this one's going through the focal point on the other side. I'm sorry, it's going through the center of the lens, so notice it doesn't bend at all. So uh, we're actually going to do a lot of these in class so you can see how they work. Uh, real images, uh, this one is inverted here because it's upside down, so we'll go through and do that a little bit. Uh, makes it pretty easy to do. You can read a little bit here about uh, how the rays don't stop at, pre at uh, P prime unless we place a screen in the image plane. If you do that, uh, you should get a sharp and well-focused image. If you place that screen anywhere else, you'll notice that this one's a little bit blurry and so is this one. So as long as we're right on that image plane, you should get a really nice focused image. Uh, the next thing that's going to go through here is going to show you how to draw all of those different um, uh, ray diagrams for lenses. So we're going to skip this part and actually do it in class. So this is a sample math problem that uh, is in your notes, and it says finding the image of a flower. Here I've got a four centimeter uh, diameter flower. It's about 200 centimeters from a 50 centimeter focal length lens of a camera. How far should the plane of the camera's light detector, so where should we put the uh, film or the detector itself so that we will get a really nice focused image? 
Uh, so in order to do this one, we know the flowers in the object plane. We're going to use ray tracing to figure out where it goes. So you see all the ray lines here. Uh, we'll do the same type of thing in class so you can see where it is. And then they give you a number. We're actually going to uh, use the thin lens equation in order to do that. So we'll take a look at it um, in class also as we go through. Uh, we can look at the heights of the two, and we know whether they're reduced or magnified by looking at the height and then height prime, which is the height of the image itself. Uh, for similar triangles, we do know that h prime over s prime is equal to h over s, where s is the distance to the image uh, s prime is, and then s is the distance to the object itself. Uh, if you solve for this, you can then find out uh, how high it is, and then you can also find the magnification as you go through too. So to find the magnification of an image, uh, we go th we basically just take the uh, image distance and divide it by the object distance, and then we use a negative sign here. Um, and that helps us with the orientation. If it's negative, it's upside down. If it's positive, uh, then it's right side up. And that's kind of what this says down on the bottom. Uh, virtual images, these are images that appear on the inside of a focal point. So if you're looking at something through a magnifying glass, you're looking at what we call a virtual image. And we'll talk about how these images are formed also as we do ray tracing. Um, so uh, it is upright, but we also said it is uh, reduced and it is a virtual image because, I'm sorry, it is upright and magnified because it's a virtual image. This is our object, so this is what we're looking at, and then this is the virtual image of that object. Uh, it talks a little bit about virtual image here uh, again. So just a little bit more about virtual images. Um, whenever we define the image distance S prime to be negative, uh, that's just because that's the sign convention to tell us that we have a virtual image. And so we'll see that. Uh, this is the example. This is the last thing for the set of notes. And to see a flower better, we hold a six centimeter focal length magnifying glass four centimeters from the flower. Uh, when we do that, they want to know what's the magnification. So the flower is in the object plane. We're going to use ray tracing to kind of figure out where it is. Uh, once we do that, we get this image. And then from measuring the image, we can find out what is the um, the, uh, the height, and we can find the magnification. The other way to do it is to use S prime and S. We're actually going to use DI and DO, so that'll make a little bit more sense when we do it. But here, our S prime is 12 centimeters. That's the image distance to the lens, and S is our object distance. So if you divide the two, uh, we get negative, uh, negative 12. So because it's on the same side, that's a negative distance instead of a positive distance. And we divide that by 4, and we end up with positive 3, which means it's upright and it's magnified by 3 times. Uh, so that is basically all there is for magnification. A diverging lens is one that's thinner at the center than the edge. Uh, and diverging lenses always make virtual, lens, uh, make virtual images. So here you're going to see that the image is always going to be on the same side as the uh, object. And so it doesn't matter kind of what you're doing. Same thing applies though. We still have focal points on both sides. We have a near and a far focal point. And light going through the center of the lens is never bent. Uh, we've got special rules for drawing those, so you can read those in your book. Uh, we'll also do that in class, and it should make it a little bit easier. Uh, you can use the sun's rays actually to start a fire. Uh, some kids use them to burn little ants on the sidewalk, uh, which sounds kind of cruel, but nonetheless, they like doing it. They want to know what kind of lens did we use, so we want all the rays to come together. If that's correct, we've got to use that converging lens. Uh, a lens is uh, produces a sharply focused inverted image on a screen. Uh, what will you see on the screen if the lens is removed? Uh, and here you would not see any image at all because the light's not focused as it goes through. Uh, a lens uh, produces a sharply focused inverted image on the screen. What will you see on the screen if a piece of dark paper is lowered to cover the top half of the lens? And on this one, you'll see an image 
it will be dimmer, but other than that, it's unchanged. So enough of the lens is there that it will bend all the light. It will bend uh, some of the light coming from the object from the very top down to the bottom, but it won't do all of the light. So it will be dimmer. So that's a pretty important thing. If you, once again, if you take this card and we would place it so that it would uh, cover half the lens, kind of like this, it wouldn't block the top half of the object. All it would do is just make the image dimmer because you still have a lot of light that can go through the rest of that lens itself. Uh, for the next quick check, uh, here I've got a lens that produces a sharply focused inverted image on the screen. What will you see on the screen if the lens is covered by a dark mask, having only a small hole in the middle? Uh, and if we do that, we'll see an object that's dimmer, but otherwise unchanged, because I still have uh, light rays that are being bent at different places uh, through that hole in the lens. Uh, they want to know which of these rays is possibly correct. And after thinking and looking at the different ray tracing, we know this one can't be right because it's diverging. We know that this one isn't right because these are all coming in and then they're forming a focal point here. Um, and the focal point is actually up higher than where the bottom ray is at. And that can't happen. Uh, A can't happen either. So our answer for this one has got to be letter D. So you see that focal point down here. Uh, this one's called demagnifying a flower. It's actually the last problem that's in the packet. So here I've got a diverging lens with a focal length of 50 centimeters. It's placed 100 centimeters from a flower. Where is the image and what is the magnification? Uh, so the flowers in the object plane, we use ray tracing to locate that image. And when we do that, we see the image here. It is uh, upright and it is reduced in size. In order to find the magnification, we're just going to do negative the distance to the uh, lens uh, from the image over the distance to the object. And because the, the uh, image is on the same side, it's negative. So here I've got a double negative, which is a positive, which means that it's upright. But because it's less than one, then we say that the object is one third of the size. And that is the end of the section.